Hello, and welcome to episode 14 of the Cozy Moth Knits podcast. My name is Caitlin, and I am the host of this podcast. Uh, there's no one else but me. Uh, this is a podcast where I spend time talking to you guys about my adventures through fiber arts. Um, up until this week, it was exclusively knitting, but uh, things have changed since then, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm coming to you from Delaware in the United States, and um, not much happens here. Um, it's a very boring state, <laughs> but here I am in Delaware, and uh, it's a Friday afternoon, and it's the first really warm day of the year. I mean, we've had like 50s and 60s um, Fahrenheit days, and now today I think it's like 77, but it's very windy. Um, so that's a uh, weather talk for right now. Um, but yeah, coming to you from Delaware uh, in my living room, which is different from uh, my knitting room or my guest bedroom <laughs> slash knitting studio. Um, I've just decided that for a little bit, I'm just gonna try to change up the scenery. Um, last episode, I was sitting right there. And um, now today I'm here because for my little mini video I did last week, I stood right here and I kind of liked how that looked and I liked how that felt. So here I am. Um, no dogs today, <laughs> surprising. There will be no barking in this video. Um, my dogs are at camp, <laughs> we like to call it, which means they're with my husband's parents. Um, they're just for no particular reason. My husband's parents just really love um, my in-laws. They just really love our dogs and uh, they asked if the dogs would come down for a sleepover. Um, so they're hanging out with them for a couple of days. Um, and because of that, it's been very, very quiet, like eerily quiet. I was telling my husband how, uh, I mean, we've done this in the past, but we it still blows our minds. How like, you know, I come home from work before my husband and I pull up and I don't hear the dogs barking. <laughs> I open the door and I don't hear the dogs barking. Um, I walk around my kitchen and I don't hear like their little feet, you know, pit pattern behind me. Like it's very, it's weird. And it makes me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> it's just, it's a different feeling. Um, but yeah, whatever. So um, I have a feeling today is going to be a short episode <laughs> uh, because I feel like I've talked about the same three projects the past few episodes and uh, very little progress has been made on them. So sorry about that. Um, but I guess we'll just jump right into it with my works in progress. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the socks that I'm working on. I talked about them a little bit last episode. Uh, so I have one sock finished. Um, I haven't weaved in the ends or anything, so apologies. It's still a little lumpy. <laughs> you know, like how a sock gets before you block it. And um, let me at least tuck in these ends. Make it look a little bit more professional, a little bit like I prepared for this. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so. Okay, so these are my Margot socks. Look how pretty the heel looks a little because it's been folded up in my bag. This is sock number one of the Margot sock. And these are by Cozy Crafting or Abby Brown on Instagram. Uh, Cozy Crafting on Instagram, real name is Abby Brown. Um, but yeah, here we go. I think they're so pretty and so fun. I love the Art Deco style to them. Um, and this pattern is just so fun to knit up. I've talked in the past about how I'm like kind of over color work and how I want to like focus more on, um, you know, textures, you know, you know, playing with different stitches to come out with different textured fabrics. Um, but when I saw these come across on my Instagram, um, and I saw a couple of podcasters talking about them, um, I had one person in particular when I saw these and their birthday's coming up. So I thought I'm gonna make these for their birthday. And I'm really liking it. I really liked how they turned out, at least the first one. Um, I did make one modification, but only because I had to, because um, I didn't really, uh, I, didn't, I didn't think. <laughs> you know, of course, Caitlin didn't think something through. Uh, so with the gusset, so you did the heel flap, you turn the heel, then the gusset. 
So you can see that little row of um, stitches where you uh, knit two, to two together or slip slip knit. And um, when I do that in my own socks, I'll step back so you're not so close to my face. Um, I didn't put on makeup today because my face is really dry. And when I put on makeup, it just looks like crumbly and gross. So I'm like, this is what you get. This is what my face really looks like. It's actually a lot more red and splotchy <laughs> than what it really appears to be on camera. Wow. Um, who would have thought? At least I put on mascara for you guys. Not like you can see because all you see is reflection from the windows in front of me. Anyway, um, <laughs> the gusset in the pattern. Because when I knit my socks, when I do the gusset, I decrease every row. I don't decrease one row and then knit one row and then decrease. I just knit every row because I am uh, impatient. <laughs> and uh, But it works out for me. It doesn't affect the way my socks fit me or anything. Um, so I just kept going out. So that's what I did with this sock. Um, and so, and I was taking a look at the pattern or at the sock in the picture because the uh, sample sock used in the pattern, they said is a size nine, a women's nine, US nine. And that's the size foot that I'm making for this. And uh, I was just like, you know, counting the stitches thinking like, okay, like, like, you know, counting the stitches after the gusset, I think it was like 15 before you reach the pattern. And I was like, oh, all right, perfect. Like, I'll just go off that way. Um, so I got, so after I'd done the gusset and everything, I real I like had been flipping back through the pattern for some reason. Um, and I realized that the way that she does her gusset is, you know, decrease every other round. So, <laughs> and it took like 10 rows to, for me to decrease all the way until I reached back my normal amount of stitches. And so I just added, you know, 10 more rows of, you know, just solid stockinette. So I was like, okay, fine. Like, you know, it's not the end of the world. I'll, you know, it's okay. So I got to, so I continued the pattern, not a problem. It was just, you know, a little, little thing that I <laughs> did wrong, but okay, you know, what else is new? This is, this is where we are. I'm always <laughs> missing one little thing and it screws up the whole thing. Um, so I get through the second batch of the color work and I get to about here and I'm like, this is kind of long and I still need to do the toe. So I put it on and, and like my foot's a size eight. So I'm, you know, accounting for, you know, it's going to be a little bit bigger, but it had already like gotten to the tip of my toe, um, right here. And I was like, great. Um, <laughs> so, and in her toe, you know, she decreases every other row as you do. Um, so I decided because I didn't want the socks to be too big because um, this person I'm making socks for, they don't like a floppy sock or like a sock that like fits their foot perfectly. They would rather the sock be a little bit tighter. Um, so I just decreased every row on the toes. So I have this tiny stubby little, <laughs> little toe. <laughs> I mean, fine. That person doesn't have to know that I messed up. Um, but yeah, so that's where we are with this sock. This is made in, this is knit in, um, uh, Schockenmeyer Premium Yak. Uh, I don't remember the names, unfortunately. I'm sorry. They're like, just like numbers, <laughs> but it's an EV and it's a, like a lilac color. And, um, I've started the color work on the second sock today. Um, my goal was to have them done before the podcast, but you know, you know how it goes. Life, life's been crazy. I mean, like 2021 has just been genuinely or generally crazy for me. Uh, I have one more month left in my master's program. So, um, yeah, I've got that on the mind. Not that I'm doing any more schoolwork because <laughs> like, not that I'm spending so much time doing school. Um, but I mean, more time than usual because you know there's one month left and you know that's on my mind and sometimes I just sit there <laughs> and I'm like oh like I'm finishing school and um having a little existential crisis <laughs> but you know how it goes every time you know you know when you graduate school when you start the next chapter of your life you know of course you have a crisis but anyway back to the socks <laughs> um yeah I, I really 
love this pattern. I've been, I adore it. And it's so easy, so easy to follow. Um, the, the pattern is very, very mem or easily memorizable. Is that the right word? Um, you can quickly memorize, um, you know, the patterns. Um, you know, all I have to do is just glance at it and be like, okay, I got it. But um, it's good, it's good. And uh, yeah, so I highly recommend uh, these socks to you guys. I know we're kind of getting out of sock season maybe. It's starting to get a little bit warmer, at least here on the East Coast, the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, so maybe like you want to start moving towards like, you know, crochet, <laughs> working with cotton instead of wool or linen. Um, but yeah, if you, you know, have someone in mind who likes hand knitted items, I highly recommend these socks. They're pretty great. And again, super easy. They're great for stash busting. Um, you know, just pick two yarns that complement each other well and have at it. But all right, so that's work in progress number one. Work in progress number two. I've got my Montrealer sweater and, and, and I have, I've held my yarn in my little, um, Caitlin yarn bowl that my aunt got me for as like a little Christmas present. And it, it like sits in my knitting, in my knitting basket, <laughs> but, um, uh, I have had it like on the table or whatever, but it just, I just put it in the knitting basket for right now. But anyway, here's the Montrealer sweater. It's, uh, yeah, it may not look like I did much, but I did. <laughs> um, last time we talked, I was about here on the body, I think. And I was talking about moving the pocket up because I felt like the sweater was already very long. And my husband, I'm, in, I'm making this Montreal sweater for my husband. I forgot to mention, I forgot that sometimes people who watch this haven't watched them chronologically. This might be your first one. If so, hello. <laughs> I'm ha like, you haven't clicked away. How surprising. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I decided to move the pocket up another um, 15 rows and uh, I started the pocket. And the pocket was, um, it was interesting. So you use your cro a crochet hook to pick up, um, to pick up stitches. I should probably get closer. This is so tough because it's like a mass, it's huge or it's, it feels big. It's just, it's heavy. It's a lot of fabric. Let me fold this in half. Maybe, yeah, it's a little bit easier. So along here, you can kind of see, you pick up stitches and then you knit your way down and you start increasing until you get to about here. And then you knit a few more rows. And then, um, then you, um, you continue knitting on the, um, on the body and then you pick up or then you knit together the bottom of the the um the pocket and then you start the ribbing and um yeah but like i had i struggled with this pocket because i like got i like finished all the increases and everything and i thought that um you know i had it knit enough or that like maybe i had moved up the pocket a little bit too far and it didn't match up with the bottom but then again like you know, again, classic Caitlin missed a point where it says like, oh, once you're finished the increase and then knit nine rows and stockinette. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so I like had continued to increase it and like just continuing to add more length to it. And then I realized, I'm like, this is a really like wide pocket. Then I look back and was like, oh, I messed up. I didn't, I didn't read it carefully enough. Uh, so I had to rip it back, um, maybe like, uh, 10 or 11 rows and then finished up that, that pocket and that maybe it was more like 15 rows and then start the pocket again or restart or continue the pocket. But, um, but yeah, it's, and then, um, once you finish the ribbing of the body, then you put a little, um, then you finish off the pocket. Like it isn't just like raw like this. You put a little band on it. But yeah, right now I'm working on the ribbing of the sweater. And um, let me tell you, this is my least favorite part about making sweaters is the ribbing at the bottom of the body because it feels like it takes forever. It like takes the longest time or at least it does for me. 
Uh, maybe not so much for people who knit um, continental, but I knit English style and I don't know. I don't know. All you continental knitters out there, does ribbing take longer or is it about the same uh, than just plain knitting stockinette? But I'm about, um, the ribbing needs to be like a two and a half inches and I'm at like an inch and inch and three quarters or something. I really tried, you guys. I really tried with this one. I just couldn't. <laughs> So next time I should have, my goal <laughs> is to at least have one of the arms done or the sleeves. There's not two of the sleeves, but we shall see. And then you need to put a hood on and all this stuff. So yeah, that's my Montrealer sweater. Um, I know Phil's not gonna be able to wear it until the fall because by the time I'm, I'm gonna be done this, it'll be May probably. But I'm chugging along at it as I'm doing it as part of the Skinny Axe uh, sweater worthy make along where uh, the intention is you, um, you know, make something in a sweater's quantity worth of yarn, whether it be a sweater or a blanket or a shawl or, you know, whatever. And you make something for someone that you love, someone who's worth knitting, you know, spending so much time knitting an object for and then you gift it to them. And of course my husband is always sweater worthy. So I'm making him the Montrealer sweater by, um, I, I always forget to give the name of the pattern writer. And this is by, I get him and his partner mixed up all the time. Uh, by designed by Dells. It's on Ravelry and yeah I thought it would be something cool and interesting because you know it's like a little hoodie my husband looks good in like those uh, casual hoodies like that I mean like I mean like all hoodies are casual but it's not like you know some hoodies are a little bit more um dressier than others if you know what I mean um so and he looks good in those so um so yeah that's what I'm going for with that and then my other work in progress is, it, it's going to look like I barely touched it because I barely touched it, <laughs> is my um, uh, Cozy Classic Raglan. <laughs> yep, that's where we are so far. Um, I did a little bit of knitting on it um, when I had, when we had our last virtual makeup, virtual makers meeting that I, I that I'm going to start doing uh, monthly. Um, I knit, you know, on the body. I didn't get very far with it. Um, but yeah, it, it's coming along. It's coming along. Uh, I still really love it. I just haven't had a chance to pick it up because I've been trying to work on the Montrealer and I've been trying to finish those socks. So this is next. This is my, again, goal for next episode is to work on this some more. I'm still in love with the colors. I feel like they're fun. I don't, I don't think the colors wash me out. I hope they don't. Um, because I always like strayed away from like whites and creams, uh, growing up because I'm so pale. <laughs> um, I've always been pale. So, um, but I think it's fine. I think the, the pops of blue and purple and pink, um, really help with that. Um, doesn't make me look like pasty, like a pasty princess. Um, but yeah, and uh, you know how much I love the Cozy Classic Raglan uh, pattern, and I recommend it to everyone who is just starting off making sweaters. That this is a great sweater pattern to start with. Uh, Jessie May does a great job writing patterns, so she's very, very detailed, um, which I feel like is um, needed when you're learning, you know, how to make a garment and it's not just like you know it's they're easy to understand like her patterns are like 20 pages long because there's a lot of explanation but then she also provides a lot of great resources um to help you in the making process and they're so easily customizable my first cozy classic raglan that i made um i made in a size large and i'm making this a size medium because the large was it was oversized um 
because I like an oversized sweater, but with this one, I pictured it being a little bit more um, fitted. So we shall see. That's my goal. And like, yeah, I'm excited for this one. But again, we'll be able to wear it until the fall because it's getting hot. Even like just holding this up, I'm like, ooh, it's a little too warm. So those are my works in progress, guys. And again, no finished objects, of course. <laughs> I feel like such a failure. I haven't gotten any, anything finished in like a month. Um, but I know next time I'll definitely have the socks done because they need to be done on a, um, in, a time, in a pinch. But we shall see. So the next thing we're going to talk about because I don't have any finished objects is um, something new and exciting, at least for me. Um, so if you didn't see my last little video I posted last week, or if you don't follow me on Instagram or anything like that, uh, that's fine, but you should go follow me. <laughs> I'm at the Cozy Moth Knits on Instagram, very active on there. You ask anyone who follows me, who has happened to message me or comment or whatever, I'm always quick to respond to DMs and respond to comments. And I try to be very active in the knitting community on Instagram. And, um, I love making new friends in this community. So be, become a friend with me, <laughs> uh, become friends with me. Um, anyway, so I posted in my last video, my last little video, um, was that I was going to be hosting a make along, which is the Sprout New Skills make along. And, um, during, from all of spring through all of spring. So March 20th to June 20th, um, we are taking this time to learn a new skill because you know and like this isn't you know the first time anyone has ever thought of this i know there's a lot of make-alongs like this um but i want to do one in our community uh because you know spring is all about new beginnings and fresh starts and you know once you know the weather gets to a point where you don't have to wear a jacket then you're like i'm ready to accomplish anything like i I uh, tweeted um, this week when it, it was the first like really warm day um, of the week, <laughs> like, you know, as soon as spring hits, like my body or my mind is like, now you wanna be a jogger. You wanna start running. You wanna get out all the time. You wanna do this, that, and the other. Um, you know, you're gonna run 10 miles by the time summer's over. <laughs> but my body also, um, as I am an old soul in my personality, but my body is also <laughs> old. Um, I, I have the lungs of like an 85 year old smoker. Um, so like while I could do like a cardio routine, I won't get tired in my muscles. Like I won't be able to breathe. <laughs> like I won't have enough oxygen, um, you know, and I've, I've never been a active person, which is why, like, I mean, not surprising. Um, the person who knits doesn't also, you know, go to the gym five times a week. Um, but, but, you know, we all know that feeling and not that, you know, being a knitter and, you know, physically fit are not mutually exclusive. Um, but it just is for me. <laughs> I try. I'm trying though. I have, you know, I have plans for this fall and I want to look hot. <laughs> I'm gonna lose a little bit of weight for that. But um, anyway, off on a tangent again. Um, so in this make along, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, we are focusing on, you know, learning skills that are based or surround the fiber arts community in general. So for example, you could start a brand, you could learn, you could teach yourself a brand new skill. Um, like I'm gonna assume that most of you guys who follow me are knitters. Um, you could teach yourself, if you haven't learned all these things already, you can teach yourself how to crochet, you can learn how to embroider, you can learn how to spin yarn, you could start weaving, you could do punch needle, like there's so many things surrounding yarn <laughs> that you could teach yourself. It doesn't have to be that you have to learn a whole new skill entirely. You could also focus on a skill in your current craft. And again, for example, if most of you guys are knitting, um, you could learn how, if you haven't, again, have, if you haven't, if you don't know these things already, teach yourself how to uh, knit brioche or how to work with cables, or, you know, maybe even teach yourself how to knit a sock if you never made socks before or a sweater if you never made sweaters before. You know, there's so many possibilities, but the, the primary, the, con the primary, uh, 
focus of this make along is just to learn something new and to try not master it but at least you know have a feel for it and you can say like oh like I don't just you know like yeah I crochet but I've also like but I it's not just you know making a crochet crochet scarf which is just you know flat like you could make you know a bunch of stuff like you could you can decide I want people to get to a point where they're like, oh, I feel like crocheting today. And then you just go in through aisle, refine a pattern and feeling comfortable, just picking whatever pattern you want and then going with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's the focus of this make along. So the scale that I chose to focus on, while there's several scales that I would like to learn uh, this year in particular, for this make along, I have decided to focus on crocheting um, because I mean, like, I've always, like, been interested. I mean, like, crocheting is, like, magical to me. Um, I never understood how to do it. And I admired people who could crochet. Um, like, you know, I've talked about, you know, my little friend at church um, who is a master crocheter. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. I, um, remember when I made those socks? for my friend, my little friend, um, a few months ago. Uh, in return, she knit me a blanket. And, or crochet me a blanket. Let me show you, I'm gonna stand back here. Like, look how pretty. It's just a sweet throw blanket and she did a great job. And she picked beautiful colors. These are like my colors. I love gray and navy and it even like matches well with my aesthetics here. I like, oh, oh, gorgeous. I should just do that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it fits. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, crocheting has always interests me and I could never figure out how to do it. Um, I like, I, um, when I was younger, I attended what was called Little Wix, and the Wix stands for Women in the Church. And so Little Wix was, um, you would go on a Wednesday night and spend like two hours with a bunch of other girls in your age group, and you would learn skills uh, in addition to a, um, you know, a Bible study. You would also learn little skills, like just, you know, for fun, like not like because we're training women to be housewives or anything. It was just, you know, like, um, kind of like uh, Girl Scouts, but not um, like going out and camping or anything like that. Um, and it was through the church. And I think Girl Scouts can also be do through the church, but whatever. Um, I don't know, I was never in them. But I remember very, very vividly the night they taught us how to crochet. And I could not wrap my little mind <laughs> around it. Um, they gave us, you know, the crochet hook and they gave us the yarn. And, um, you know, they didn't really do a good job <laughs> teaching us how to crochet. They were like, instead of teaching us the hand motions or, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, uh, they were like, wrap it around and then take your finger and then, you know, chain that way. And like, even then, like it like confused the heck out of me and I didn't really get it. Um, so I like stopped and then I moved on to knitting a couple years later. Um, so yeah, I, I have that image again, very vivid in my mind. I don't remember what room it was. I remember who was sitting around me, like so weird how, you know, fiber artist does that to you. But, um, yeah, so because I couldn't figure it out in that, you know, we only had one night and like half an hour to learn how to crochet, but they only taught us how to chain. Like they didn't go into like any stitches or anything. Um, so I, uh. I just told myself I couldn't do it <laughs> and how it didn't make sense to me and how I didn't like how, um, like I liked how <laughs> structured, it, you know, for like lack of a better term, knitting is that all the stitches are on the needle. Like you're not searching for stitches <laughs> to pick up or whatever. Like they're all on the needle for the most part. And like, that's what you work on. And like, that's what kept me engaged with knitting was that, you know, they're all here. <laughs> it's not just free, you know, like free fabric and then I'm just picking up here and you know, whatever. So 
not that like, you know, nothing against crocheting, obviously. I just like, in my head, I told myself, no, I can't do it. But that's not the message I'm trying to put across here on this podcast. If you remember very, very early on, and I still say it from time to time, um, you know, don't tell yourself you can't do it, just do it. You know, like you're holding yourself back if you tell yourself you can't do a certain thing uh, when you definitely have this, have the ability to do it. So I can't say that and then say like, oh, I can't crochet, you know? <laughs> so, so I decided to teach myself and that's what I did this week. So again, well, before that, um, you know, I posted on Instagram, and, you know, the video and talked to you guys about it a little bit. And the first thing I did was ask, where do I get crochet needles? <laughs> uh, you guys, you know, suggest some crochet needles for me. And, um, and I'm so sorry, I got so many re replies, uh, but I'll put your name right here, uh, who told me to get the Be Crafty crochet hook set. And I got these off of Amazon. And like the, the set that one of my followers told me about came in like a bag and you had little notions and stuff in it. Uh, but I just have too many notions. <laughs> who would have thought? I have a lot of notions and they weren't like, you know, obviously, I can never have enough handmade notions like my friend Tracy's, um, you know, progress keepers. I can never have enough of those or like, you know, Woolen Forest and her, you know, you know, whatever. But like, you know, those little plastic ones that you, you know, they always come in like sets like this and they're, they're very cheap. And while they do have their place, I do have, you know, cheap notions as well. I just had plenty of them and I didn't want to get any more. Uh, so I decided just to get a set of, um, of 12 uh, crochet hooks. And I knew I wanted crochet hooks that have the little, little handle, you know, not, you know, again, nothing against like just the metal ones, but I really like the, the, the thought of this guy. So, um, again, set of 12 crochet hooks from 2.25 millimeter to eight millimeter. And, um, yeah, I'm just keeping them in a little case right now. And uh, I, I like it. Um, I've been, you know, dabbling a little bit into into crochet um, YouTube, and here is the hook. The hook isn't very deep, which I think is a thing. Is that what I understand? Like, it's not a very deep hook. It's very shallow, right? I think that's what I feel like. I've seen deeper crochet hooks, unless like I'm being, unless I'm little crazy but um but it's fine i like it isn't affecting what i'm doing so far i don't know <laughs> uh but yeah i started off, i tried to start um i tried filming myself <laughs> crocheting and maybe i'll put a little bit here um it was like 45 minutes of me trying to teach myself how to crochet um <laughs> it was interesting i like really struggled in the beginning but i eventually got the hand motions down and everything. So let me show you <laughs> the long awaited, um, what I worked on this week. <laughs> and uh, so here we go. Wow. <laughs> so I started off with 40, like a 40 chain thing. And I started and I did, I don't know how many rows of single crochet just to like, get my feet wet and to get the, you know, the feeling going. So I did about this, you know, in one night. And you know, the bottom, the chain was very tight because I'm genuinely a tight knitter anyway. And of course I was nervous and like trying to figure out everything. So it made everything tight. So the bottom was tight. And I, and I did go the first night. Um, but then the next night, um, I decided to delve into, um, what was it? Half single or single, or du half double or whatever. <laughs> the next stepped up from single crochet. And I think that's, um, half double, half double crochet. I believe it's what it's called. And, um, I know good with that. And as you can, as you can tell, I ended up with a shorter top. And as you can tell, you can see what I did wrong is that, especially here, I never, I didn't end up going to the end of the row, but I was so much in the zone that I didn't notice. 
until, you know, I start, then like I did the half double and then I started doing the double and I was like, this is going by really fast. And I was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> Cause I ended up, I started with 40 chains and I ended up with 27. So, um, but yeah, so that's my first attempt. <laughs> and I think I did okay for my first time. Um, except for the fact that I didn't go to the end of the row and I ended up decreasing all the way to the top. So now we got a parallelogram. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, I thought it, it, I was, I'm satisfied with how my stitches turned out, I think. Um, it's kind of really hard to tell on camera, um, but I've got the feeling down and it was like addicting. Like I like couldn't, I was like, okay, one more row. I'm like, okay, one more row. Like, okay, one more. I was like, I gotta finish this sweater. I'm like, but I gotta keep doing one more rows. And... I, I had fun with it. I thought it was like, I, I see the appeal and I understand why people love it so much. Um, so this was my practice swatch. <laughs> uh, this was just, you know, a worsted weight yarn I had in my stash. Cause I was going to start off with a smaller weight, like a DK weight cotton. And then you just jump into, you know, making a washcloth or whatever. Um, but that wasn't working out. It was too small. So I did opted for a larger yarn and a larger needle for my first time. So yeah, that's what I've got so far. And um, I'm very excited to move on. I think next week, what I'm gonna work on are the uh, washcloths and the face scrubbies that I talked about in my other video. But um, yeah, uh, and again, I'm, I'm proud of myself. You know, all those years telling myself I couldn't do it. I'm glad that I finally decided to take this time and jump in with it. And um, I'm excited for the rest of spring to see how uh, how my skills continue to grow. I've already like thought about things to make for for people. <laughs> there's a um, there's there's a young woman in my church, and she just found out she was pregnant a few um, weeks ago, and uh, she loves bees. Like bees are her thing. I mean, I like bees too, but she really, like, bees are like her personality trait. <laughs> and I mean that this in the most endearing way possible. Um, but she's about to have a baby and she's calling her baby her little, little bee. So, like, I saw my friend, Judy of the Autumn Acorn, made a little bumblebee, uh, Amagurumi. <laughs> and uh, for her granddaughter, and I'm like, oh, I can make that for, you know, my little friend from church and her little baby bee. So, um so I can get my, my skills a little bit better and then I'll make that for the baby's not due until October. So I have my time, I have time. <laughs> um, but I think that is all I have for you today. It ended up being 40 minutes, <laughs> at least now. I know I'm gonna cut it down, but. So again, I don't know if, if I should say sorry for a short episode, if you guys are like, thank God, this is a lot more digestible than Caitlin's hour long <laughs> podcasts. Um, but yeah, here we are. Hopefully next time I'll have, I will have a finished object to show you. Um, so I'll, and um, if you haven't joined in on the, um, what's it called? <laughs> if you haven't joined in on the uh, Sprout New Skills Mal, please feel free to jump in and join. Uh, let me know in the comments what you uh, would like to do during the Mal, like how you would like to participate. Um, there are going to be, you know, I'm hosting it exclusively on Instagram and at the end of it all, there are going to be prizes and we are going to do a Zoom meetup where we're all going to talk about what we made and what we learned, etc. So, you know, go follow me on Instagram at the Cozy Moth Knits and follow the hashtag, um, hashtag Sprout New Skills Mal and you can see what everyone has been working on so far. It's only been a week and we've got so many submissions and so many people have messaged me, you know, telling me what they're working on. Like one of my friends, Judy, again, said that um, she's gonna learn how to whittle her own crochet hooks. So I think it is super cool because she's a woman of all trades. She knows how to do so much. So this is definitely something that's um, very, very unique to her, definitely. Um, so anyway, I would love for you to join in on the make along. Um, it's super casual, super, you know, like, yeah, again, casual and it'll be, it'll be fun. And then we'll get to 
learn new things and you can even make new friends. You know, if you have questions, reach out to other people in the Mal who, you know, like for example, me, like I have a couple friends and uh, followers who I know are well versed in both knitting and crochet and some of them have already reached out to me and said, if you have any questions, let me know. And um, that can be you guys too, you know, sharing your skills uh, with each other and the things that you've learned. So not only is this like a fun thing for you to, you know, for you to learn a new skill, it's also to, you know, build your friend group and to continue to, you know, expand our community and, um, you know, it's just good, good, clean fun, <laughs> you know? Um, so, okay. Now that is all I have to share with you today. Um, so I will let you guys go here. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, you know, hit the subscribe button and, uh, the bell if you'd like, and don't forget to comment and like, and again, subscribe, uh, going through all the YouTube, you know, sayings, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I love visiting with you all as always, you know, this is the highlight of, you know, my, you know, my bi-weekly <laughs> life. And I love making these videos for you and spending time with you and getting to talk to you guys in the comments and on my Instagram as well. So I uh, will see you in a couple weeks. So stay safe out there, keep knitting, and I will see you all later.